Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Surendra Suhas Lingawar. Currently uh, studying as a resident in Radio Diagnosis Department of Dr. Balasaheb Vikhe Patil Rural Medical College, Loni, Ahmadnagar. The title of my uh, paper presentation is Epiploic Appendagitis Presenting as a Case of Acute Abdomen, a Case Report. Epiploic appendagitis is a rare self-limiting ischemic inflammatory process that affects the appendices epiploicae of the colon. It may either be primary, spontaneous, or secondary to the adjacent pathology. It usually affects patients in their second to fifth decades with predilection for women and obese individuals, presumably due to larger appendages. Patients typically present with abdominal pain and guarding. It many a times in is indistinguishable from diverticulitis and acute appendicitis depending on the location of the pain. Because there is focal peritoneal irritation, pain is more localized than with other causes of acute abdominal pain. Epiploic appendagitis denotes inflammation of one or more appendicitis epiploicae, which number 50 to 100 and are distributed along the large bowel with variable frequency, that is, the maximum are in rectosigmoid junction of the colon and the least are noted in the descending colon. The pathogenesis of epiploic appendagitis is due to uh, torsion of large or pedunculated appendage epiploicae or spontaneous thrombosis of the venous outflow which results in ischemia and necrosis of the append uh, epiploic appendage. Now, the case which presented to our institute was a 33-year-old male that came to OPD with pain, uh, complaints of pain in abdomen, which were incidents in onset, gradually progressive over duration of presentation since two days. The pain was non-radiating, not associated with any aggravating or relieving factors. There were uh, no history of fever, urinary, bowel, complaints, trauma, no history of chronic comorbidities, no history of allergies or any drug consumption, no similar family history and no similar complaints in the past. On admission, patient's vitals were stable. On examination, abdomen was soft with localized focal tenderness over the left iliac fossa region. Lab tests for complete blood counts, LFTs, RFTs, serum electrolyte levels, protein levels, coagulation profile were all within normal limits. Radiological investigations were done for the patient to identify the pathology. Radiograph of abdomen and pelvis in erect AP view was done. USG abdomen and pelvis was done. CT scan abdomen and pelvis. Plane and contrast was done. The imaging findings were on radiograph of abdomen and pelvis, which was done, which was performed using Allen's 800 MAS machine, revealed that the radiograph of abdomen and pelvis was within normal limits. Abdomen and pelvis on so USG was performed on Zario 200 machine with 6C1 curvilinear transducer at, at the point of maximum tenderness. There was a 17 into 9 mm size well-defined oval, non-compressible, heterogeneously hyperechoic area with surrounding subtle hypoechoic region. On color Doppler study, it did not show any vascularity. There was minimal surrounding fat standing. However, no adjacent bowel wall thickening was noted, nor any enlarged lymph nodes were noted. Then the CCT of abdomen and pelvis was done using Siemens Somatom Perspective 64 rows and 120 slices machine, which revealed that there was an 8 into 10 into 5 mm size, well-defined oval-shaped heterogeneously enhancing hypodense fat density area with peripheral hyperdensity. This sign is also called as hyperattenuating ring sign, adjacent fat stranding. And this area was noted abutting descending colon in left iliac fossa region. However, no adjacent bowel wall thickening was noted. And it was noted just beneath the anterior abdominal wall muscle on the left side. There was a tiny central hyperdense area noted within the lesion, which likely suggests thrombosis vascular pedicle. The radiograph of abdomen and pelvis in erect AP view is shown, which appears to be within normal limits. USG abdomen and pelvis was done. As explained, it shows a well-defined, non 
or compressible heterogeneously hypoechoic area with surrounding hypoechoic area. Now, this we are provided with limited axial cross section view of CT abdomen and pelvis in the plane images. We can see that there is a well defined oval shaped hypodense fat density area with peripheral hyperdense rim that is called as hyper hyperattenuating rim sign and adjacent fat standing noted. After giving contrast in arterial phase, no enhancement was noted. Then in venous phase, there was heterogeneous slight enhancement and there is evidence of a hyperdense tiny area in, in the center of the lesion which shows there is thrombosis vascular pedicle. The, we are provided with coronal images of the contrast venous phase which also shows the same lesion heterogeneously enhancing ovoid lesion in the left iliac fossa region. The sagittal images of venous uh, phase after giving contrast of CT abdomen and pelvis also show the same lesion. The diagnosis was based on history and imaging findings. Then on Im the imaging differentials that were considered were diverticulitis, omental infarction and omental neoplasms. Diverticulitis was ruled out as bowel wall outpouching was not noted. No communication with the bowel wall was noted. And no bowel wall thickening was also noted. Omental infarction was ruled out on the basis of imaging findings the size of the lesion which was well uh, within like was less than 2 cm and also based on abdominal pain as omental infarction classically involves right lower quadrant and our, our patient presented with left iliac or left lower quadrant pain. Secondary omental infarction was also ruled out as there was no previous history of any surgery or any intervention. Omental neoplasms were ruled out on the basis of imaging findings as well the omentum elsewhere in the abdomen was within normal limits and not involved. No other pathology was found in the uh, CCT abdomen and pelvis scan. After the diagnosis of epiploic appendagitis was made, the patient was given supportive treatment with analgesics and fluid therapy and rest, following which the patient improved and was discharged from the hospital. The term epiploic appendagitis was for the first time employed by Line in 1956 and first surgery description for the same was done in 1986 by Danielson. Epiploic appendagitis is a self-limiting disease and responds well to analgesics and SAIDs, sometimes mimics acute abdominal conditions for which surgery is required and therefore correct identification on CT prevents unnecessary surgery. Also, treatment options for epiploic appendagitis many times do not involve surgery. Chronically, an infarcted epiploic appendage may get calcified and detached to form an intraperitoneal loose body, also called as peritoneal mice. It may rarely involve the vermiform appendixis epiploic appendage and it is called as epiploic appendagitis of the vermiform appendix, thus mimicking amenocytes both clinically as well as potentially on the CT. Therefore, knowing the condition, and making the right appropriate diagnosis serves best for the patient, clinician, surgeons, as well as the diagnosing radiologist. These are my references. Thank you for your patient hearing.